Okay, we know my own line, or Hino, I'll end my sail, the end of corn, and I'll end my sail, the end of canoe. I'd like to begin the show tonight on Share Ora. First, I'd like to get it, dedicate the show tonight for Le'ilu Nishmat, one of my teachers, Rabbi Aaron Wolken. Ruach Adonai Tenechenu Begar Eden. Also, for Le'ilu Nishmat, Shemaya Ben Adina, Ruach Adonai Tenechenu Begar Eden. Also, for Le'ilu Nishmat, Ruth Bat Rachel. Ruach Adonai Tenechenu Begar Eden. Le'avdil Ben Ametim Lachayim, for Rufa Shema. For Sheva ben Hatun Hana and Reuven ben Hatun Hana, El Narafana Lahem, El Narafana Lahem, El Narafana Lahem. And also a Rufa Shema for David Binyamin ben Dova Fega. And for all the other Cholim from the coronavirus, may they have a speedy and complete recovery. El Narafana Lahem, El Narafana Lahem, El Narafana Lahem, and the Zuchut of the Torah, the Bezat Hashem are going to learn tonight. Okay, so open up the Sha'are Ora. We're on page Lamed Gimma, which is 33, and we're in the, on the top of the uh, line, the, the last line on the page on the top of the line. So it says over there, remember, we're still in the Hakadama, we're still in the introduction. Bezrat Hashem, hopefully today we'll be able to finish the introduction, and then we'll have another class next, tomorrow, because this is a makeup class for last Monday, and Bezrat Hashem will be, get this, be, will be able to start the first Sha'ar, uh, which is uh, the Sha'ar of Amonai. So it says over here, Ulufi she Hashem Barach Ratzala Zakotenu, and because God wanted a, wanted to give us merit, Bara Begufa Adam, He created in the body of the man Kama Evarim Nistarim Veniglim, a number of limbs, some of them hidden, some of them are 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 revealed, Bidimyon Siman Lemaase Merkava, which is a parallel, or is has the same type of uh, imagery, shall we say, like the Maaseh Merkava, which is how God interacts with the world. And if a person has the zuchut to purify a limb from one of his limbs, if he's able to purify that particular limb, and of course we know that there are 248 limbs in the human body which correspond to the 248 positive commandments, and there are 365 veins and sinews which correspond to the 365 lotas and negative commandments in the Torah. So if a person is able to purify their limb through the performance of the mitzvot or to not perform them, the averot that are connected to those limbs specifically, then what happens is that because the limb has a, uh, a, a balance, or shall we say a counterpart in the Merkava, that particular ever becomes a kise, becomes a seat, becomes a place for the Merkava to rest. Lo to davar el yon ha-pinimi, for that particular item, hanikra b'shem zeh, that it's called by that name as well. Im ayin ayin, if it's an I, an I. Im yad yad, if it's a arm, it's a hand, it's a hand. V'chen l'chol ashar. And this is for all of them. Now, if you remember, it says in the Chumash that Yosef, when he was about to make the sin with Potiphar, what does it say? He saw the image of his father in the Merkava. This is exactly what we're talking about. He realized that if he would sin with that particular limb of his body, specifically uh, his ever, the Katan, the small limb over there, with the wife of Potiphar, then he would, that limb would be damaged in a way it could not be a Merkava for the upper for whatever for for the image for that for that limb or that dimion that comparison in the shamayim. So let's go to the uh, on the page Lamid Gimel, go back one page and to Lamid Bet on the bottom. Bara begufa adam. He created in the in the body of the man, uh, man woman. This is not uh, we're not being sexist. Biur hapasuk. The explanation of the pasuk. Betzelam Elohim bara et adam. In the image or in the likeness of God, in the likeness of Elohim, man was created. That Adam, man, was created in the image or in the likeness of how God runs the world. The Hanhaga is how he governs the world. And this includes all of the forces and all of the worlds. 
Ve'evarav, and the limbs of the man, hem mashal u'mapal lechol ha'kochot ve'olamot ha'elyonim. The each limb is, an, is basically a parable and a map for all of the forces and all of the worlds, the upper worlds, ha'mesudarim kavyachol ketavnik komat adam, which are organized, not exactly, but similar from an imagery point of view to the way a man is, to the way the man is imaged, to the way a person's structure, which means the structure of the human body is created in a similar way as the structure of how God interacts with the world. Once again, we're not talking about any physicality over here in the Shammai. There's no physical. This is all spiritual. But the spiritual way that God interacts with the world our bodies are created in that image. The Evarav, I'm sorry, okay, let's go on. Velachen katav ibn Ezra, and this is why the Ibn Ezra wrote in Parashat Teruma, in Sefer Shemot, Vehayodea sod nishmato umatkonet gufo, a person who knows the secret of his soul and his body. Through understanding how the human body works or through how the human body is anatomically organized, a person can also understand the sublime things in the spiritual world. Because the man is created like a small world. Like it's explained in the Zohar in Parashat Yitro. God that created the man, He made inside the man imagery or uh, the same type of likeness as the secrets in the Shamayim, Shel Haolam Haelyon of the upper world. And all of the image all of the different uh, images of the lower secrets, which means the world, the secrets of the lower worlds, shel ha'olam atachton, which means man is created in a way that's a parallel between the upper worlds and the lower worlds regarding their structure. Vehem chakukim be'adam, and they are engraved inside the person, the man, vehu omed betzelem Elohim, and he stands in the image of Elohim. This is the deeper meaning of what does it mean that man was created in the image of God. And it was explained in more detail in the book, the Tikkun Zohar. Every limb in the body of a man. We find within it, in a specific way, a root and a source in the upper worlds, which means every limb inside a person has its source in the upper world that is corresponded to that specific limb. Midat chesed he shoresh umakor lizroa yamin. The midah the chesed is the shoresh, is the root and the source of the zroa yamin, which means the right arm. Midat ha-gvura he shoresh umakor lizroa small. The the midah of the gvura of the gvura is a shoresh, is a root and a source for the left arm. Midat ha-tiferet the midah the tiferet. He shoresh umakor laguf. It's a root and it's a source of the body of the the trunk. Netzach vehod shoshim mishne haraglaim. Netzach and hod are 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 rooted. The roots of the are uh, the roots of the the man's right leg and left leg. Yesod the ot brit kodesh. The yesod is the ot of the brit, which means in the man it's the uh, it's the it's his limb, and it's the woman it's it's hers. Umachut he shoresh umakol ever a pe. And Malchut, he says, is a shorish of the pe, the mouth. Don't forget, there's a mouth above and there's a mouth below. I'm not going to go into detail about that. Hachochmahi shorish umakola machshavet at machshavet adam umishkana bemoach yemani. The chokhma, the wisdom, there's the shorish and the source, the 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 sira the chokhma is the source and the makor and the and the root for the thoughts of a person in the right brain. Bina mishkana mishkana bemoach small. The bina, its mishkan, its place of dwelling is in the left brain. Vehi shorish umakola havanata adam. And sh- and the bina is a source and a and a and a and a root to, for the understanding in a person. Shemishkana balev that the mishkan is in the lev. Keter elyon the keter elyon which means the crown the ratzon who shorish umakola machshava shel adam. It is the source of the thoughts of the man. Vehu hagugolat and this is the skull. 
Ayen Berabeno Bachye Bereshit Perak Aleph Pasuk Kav Zayin. Look over there. Uba Rakanti Bereshit Sherichul Levayer Nyanzen. Also in the Rakanti. Vezema Shneemar. This is what it says in Eov. Mi Besari Eheze Eloa. From my flesh I can perceive God. Okay, going back to top. Okay, we are. Ketzad. How does this work? You have a person who's careful with what he allows his eyes to see. That he doesn't look at something that is not allowed to be looked at, something of nakedness. And not to anything, he doesn't allow his eyes to look at anything that is inappropriate. But the only thing he allows his eyes to look at are things that are holiness and uh, and service of God. Then that particular eye becomes like a kise, like a dwelling place, a seat, a merkava, shall we say, for that particular spiritual aspect in the shamayim that is called ayin. And this is the same thing for the yad, for the hand, for the arm, and the regal, and the, and the leg, and all of the other limbs. Let's look at Lamed Gimel on the bottom. Oto ein naset kise. Bi'er ha'inya benefesh ha'chaim. In the nefesh ha'chaim, Rav Chaim Velozhin explained. V'zeh l'shano, and this is his language. V'zeh kol ha'adam. And this is the entirety of man. Shekol koach prati shebo. Every individual power that a man has, mesudar neged olam, is basically in parallel to one of the spiritual worlds. The koach echad prati misoda shiur koma, and one particular detail of his strength that is uh, basically according to the way he is structured, shal klala kochot ve'olamot. This is the klal, this is the general in the upper world. Because the upper worlds are also designed in a similar fashion in the imagery of Komata Adam. And also the mitzvot. All the mitzvot are connected and tied to their shoresh in the Elyon. In fact, in the Lashon of the Zohar, a mitzvah is a connector. Besidre perkea merkava in the order of the different aspects of the merkava. Veshiur komash al olamot kulam and the way the worlds are structured. Kamoshi katav bazoa like it's written in the Zohar and Parashat Yitro. Kol pikude oraita all the mitzvot of the Torah. Mit ahdan b'malka kadisha ilaa are connected to the king, the holy king, and the high king, which of course is in the Shemaim. Minahon b'resha demalka. From them are from the resha, from the head, from the, the head of the malka. Uminahon bigufan, some of them in the goof, which means some of the mitzvot are connected to the keter, some of them are connected to the goof. Uminahon bide malka, and others are connected to the malchut, or I'm sorry, in the yadayim, the hands of the malchut, the hands of the, of the melech. Uminahon miragloy, and some in the feet. Ubeasot adam ratzon kono yitbarach, and when a person does Hashem's will, and when he fulfills one of the mitzvot of the Torah with one of the limbs of his body, which means that particular tikkun, that correction, causes a correction to happen in the aspect in the upper world that's connected to that particular mitzvah. Either to correct it or to raise it up. Or to raise up a kedusha holiness on top of holiness. And when a person is able to fulfill all the mitzvot in shlemut, the chol pratehem and all of their details, and all of their de- uh, uh, details and all their uh, specific specific items, through the action. He therefore corrected all of the worlds and all of the orders that are in the above in the in the, in the heavens. And he becomes a merkava. He becomes a uh, he becomes a merkava. He becomes a uh, chariot for those particular items. 
and his limbs become sanctified through that connection. Uchvod Hashem chofef alav tamid. And the honor or the glory of Hashem is on him always. This is the concept of ve'asuli mikdash v'shachanti betocham. The concept is to make a person's body, to make it a mikdash, and then the shechinah rests with the person's body. Ad kad l'shono. Nimtza, therefore we see, Shevshar Shadam Prati Yamshichet Hashraat Hashikina Batakunim, that a person, an individual person, can bring down abundance of the Shikina in the lower worlds. Shetzimtsema Kavod Shikina To Alav. Shad that the that the Kavod of the Shikina rested on that particular person. Kemoshit Simtsem Shikinat Kavodo Beveta Mikdash. Just like God put his kedushah, his kavod, on the Bet HaMikdash. V'nikra Adam Zeh, and this person is called Merkava V'kisela Shechina. He's called a chariot and a seat or a place of dwelling for the Shechina. L'fisha Shechina Shora Allah, because the Shechina rests with him. Ulechan Shehu Holech, and wherever he goes, HaShechina Shora Allah, Holech Etito. The Shechina that, go, that rests with him goes with him. Umam Shicha Shefa V'abracha V'chom HaKom Shehu Nimtza, and the bracha, he's able to draw the bracha anywhere he goes, since the Shekhinah is with him. Kideita bebereshit rabba, like it says in the Midrash, Perak Vav, Bet, Ve'ayivarach Hashem et Bet HaMitzri Biglal Yosef. That you, when Yosef was in the house of the Mitzri, there was bracha. Why was there bracha in the house of the Mitzri? Because Yosef was there. And since Yosef was a Merkava for the Shekhinah, that allowed the bracha, when he goes to Yosef, to also go to the house of the Mitzri. He himself had no merit for that, but it was through Yosef. That means that any place where the 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 the, the, the tzaddikim go, the shechina goes with them, and that's precisely why Rashi over there, by where it says Vayetzei Yaakov Meber Shava Vayelech Arana, it says over there, what does it mean Vayetzei Yaakov Meber Shava? What does it mean Vayetzei? What about what other people left? Why Yaakov? Because he left behind Avraham and Yitzchak, and it says over there, what does it mean Vayetzei Yaakov? When a tzaddik leaves the city, Pana. When a tzaddik leaves the city, the honor and the, and the shine and the, and the, and all these things leave with him. That's only impre- the only people who notice that are obviously righteous people like Abraham and Yitzchak when Yaakov left. So we see what every tzaddik what he does through his actions or her actions, he brings the shechinah with him and the shefa wherever he goes. And that's precisely what's happening with the Jewish people in the galut. When we're in the galut, we bring the shefa, we bring the shechinah with us when we behave ourselves properly, and that's why the goyim have bracha. And that's why the Gemara says, if the goyim would have realized what bracha they received when we were all concentrated in the temple, and we were all to bring bracha to the entire world through our actions in the temple, they would never have destroyed the temple. And our rabbi explained, if a person goes in the ways of Hashem, and he behaves in a proper way in the eyes of Hashem, in holiness and a good eye, he can draw from that upper world, that's called Ayin, that he can bring from that particular world, Shefa, abundance and providence from Hashem. And the heart of a person is like the Bet Tamikdash. If a person purifies his heart, he will have the merit to have the Shekhinah with him in his heart. And this is what it means. This is what it means when the Torah says, and I make me a Mikdash, you shall make me a Mikdash, and I will dwell in you, not in it. It doesn't say in the Pasuk in the, that God's going to have his dwelling in the Bet HaMikdash. Ela betocham, amongst you, betoch libam, in the hearts of the Jew. Ayen benefesh hachayim, and look at the nefesh hachayim, barucha, where he explains it in detail. Vim holech bidracha avit barak kedumat avot, and if a person goes with Hashem, like the example of the forefathers, yachad hem hamerkava, then what happens is, they become, the person, the tzaddik, becomes a merkava, becomes a chariot for the shechinah, 
for God's providence in the world. And what did the forefathers do? They revealed God's functioning in the world to everyone else. Avraham Bechesed, Avraham revealed her through the Midah of the Chesed, loving kindness. Yitzchak through the Midah of the Gvura, through judgment. Yaakov Torah, Yaakov did it through the Torah. Hu Naseh Merkava Elav, Yitbarach, Kedugmat Avot. If the person has the Chesed, or has the Gvura, or has the Tiferet, which is the Torah, he can be a Merkava and that Midah in the world for Hashem. And he can draw Shefa from those Midot, those Sfirot in the upper world. And this is what it means when it said, Tzadik Yesod Olam, that Tzadik is the foundation of the world. That Tzadik Shomer Habrit, that Tzadik that watches after the Brit Milah, he becomes like the tzaddik ha'elyon, to give abundance to the world. Okay. We're on page Lamed Hay on top above the lines. And this is what the rabbis told us in Bereshit Rabbah, in the Midrash. Ha'avot hem ha'merkava. The Avot, the forefathers, they were the Merkava, or they are the Merkava. And they didn't say that each one of the individual Avot was a Merkava. Ela Ha'avot, all of them. Ketzad, how does this work? Avraham Avinu alava shalom, lakach betahora tzad yamin. Avraham Avinu, with holiness and purity, took for himself the right side, R-I-G-H-T, Be'yarash Yamin Shamala, and he inherited the right from above. V'hu midshu midat chesed. This is the midah of loving kindness. V'alzeh ne'emar, and this is what it says, V'yisa Avram haloch v'nasoh ha'negba. That Avraham went there and returned ha'negba. What is negba? Negev, which is darom, is chesed. Yitzchak lakach betahara midat sad small. Yitzchak in holiness and purity. He took. He had the midah of the small of the of the gvura. Shehu hapachad. That's the pachad. The awesomeness. The fear. Valzen neemana. This it says. Vayishava Yaakov befachad yaviv Yitzchak. That Yaakov swore in the pachad of aviv Yitzchak, which means that was the midah of Yitzchak. The Yaakov lakach betahara sad kava emtsai. And Yaakov took with purity the middle ground. And this is said, Yaakov ishtam yoshoev oalim. And Yaakov is ishtam yoshoev oalim. What is ohalim? Plural. Ben ohel Avraham or ben ohel Yitzchak. Between the ohel of Avraham and the ohel of Yitzchak. On the ohel of the right is Avraham. The left is Yitzchak. So the middle, of course, is Yaakov. This is what it means, ishtam yoshoev oalim. Between the ohel of Avraham and the ohel of Yitzchak. And now we see that all three of the forefathers together are a kise, because in order for a chair to be able to stand, you have to have three legs. Two legs or one leg, a chair can stand. But with three legs, it has stand. Now it can be a merkava. And this is how it's very, very clear what the Midrash is talking about. Ha'avot hen hen ha'merkava. Continuing on in the lines above the about line, the yesh lano and now I have to enlighten you on something that is connected to what we just discussed. Da, you should surely know. Ki hamidot hem tuluyot ba'evarim. The midot, the attributes, are connected to the limbs. Ketzad, how does this work? Midat ha'ain hi haraot. The midah of the ayin is the ability to see. Midah the ozen hi hashema. The midah of the ozen of the ear is to be able to hear. Midah tayad hi hamishush. The midah of the hand is the ability to touch, to feel. Midah taregel hi halicha. The midah of the regel of the feet is walking, moving from place to place. Vinei hamidot nimshachot achar evarim, and the midot are connected to the limbs that represent those midot. Ulafi shis kiru chazal, and this is what chazal meant. This is what it means when they refer to the midot of Hashem. Lamala, yesh lano ladun inyan hamidot, kmosh yesh lecha ladun inyan ozen. Just like you have the midot in this world, parallel in a, para, in, a, in a parable kind of way, you have these midot in Shamaim. The yad veregel shamarnu. Ukmo she'en erech beinenu binyan ha'evarim. And just like our limbs have nothing to do 
with the upper worlds. I mean, as far as their their abilities, we're much smaller. We're Alam Katan. We're not, we're not anywhere near what that what could be done in the Olam uh, Elyonot, the upper worlds. Kach en erech ben Elyon midot, and that's also that there's no comparison. That even though we have Chesed, it's nothing compared to the Chesed that's in the Shemaim. Lufish anu tzurchim lishtamesh bechi burzer b'lashon hamidot. And because when we're writing this book, we have to be able to use words, terms to describe some of these things that are sublime. Hisham Erlecha. Once again, the rabbi gives a warning. Ushmor nafshecha me'od. And guard your soul very, very carefully. Penti kashel. That you should not fail. The tomar. And you shall think or say. Shiesh lahashem itbarach. That you're going to say that God has midam mugbelat o meshoara. That just like we have a limited amount of chesed. We have a limited amount of givura. God doesn't have any limitations. There's no limitations. So we shouldn't think it's a parallel, it's a dimyon, it's an imagery. But no way we should think that they're, 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 they're completely similar. She'ena davar ken. It's erech. By an erech point of view, by a value, the, those are infinite and ours are finite. Aval k'mo she'en le'inyan ayin ve'ozen, shi'ur u'gvul ve'dimyon, kachu adin b'midot. And just like regarding uh, sight and regarding ozen, there is uh, there is no limitation to Hashem's ability or the ability in the upper world. There's no limits. This is the same thing with the midot. So even though they're called midot, and the definition of a midah is a measured amount, that's a chosen measured amount in Shemaim. It doesn't mean that they're truly limited. There's no limitation to what Hashem can do. He chooses to limit himself, and that's why it's called midot. We actually are limited. We can't do everything that we would uh, that we would like to do. We are limited. Let's look at Lamed Dalad. Mehaavot hu hamerkava. That's in the the line underneath the line. Aydei sheavot hitnahagu b'midot ha'elyonot, because the forefathers behaved in ways like according to the midot of the Shemaim. Sharta alam shechina v'nigleta ba'olam. The shechina rested with them. And through the Shekhinah resting with them, the Shekhinah was revealed in the world. And the rabbi, Rabbi Gikatilia, proved from the, from the Midrash where it talks about Ha'avot Hen Hen Amerkava, he proved Shekol Avot Yachad Hem Amerkava, that all the forefathers together are the Merkava. Because each one grabbed one of the Midot, that has one of these Midot, and was expert in that Midah. And when you have Chesed, Din, and Rachamim, that is basically summarizes everything. You have the right, you have the left, you have the middle. You have that, you have everything. Like the Ramban wrote in Sefer Emunava Bitachon, it's possible that Kavara wasn't to say when the Midrash said, What about uh, on, on the only on what should we call it on the Avot, but David also? Every tzaddik that attaches themselves to one particular midah, mimidotav shela kadosh baruch hu, attaches themselves to one of the midot of the shamayim. Aval hiskiru ha'avot shidavku beotan, but it's specifically mentioned the avot attached themselves to specific midot, hamidot hanorot sha'olam mitkayem bahem, which means the essential midot that the world lives or is existing through those midot. The akavana, what does this mean? Al shlosha dvarim ha'olam omed. This goes back to Pekei Avot. That the world exists all because of three things, or three things the world rests on. Meaning, Torah, Avodah, Gimelut Chasadim. Torah is the Tiferet, Avodah is the Gvura, and Gimelut Chasadim is the Chesed. So the Torah corresponds to Yaakov, the Avodah corresponds to Yitzchak, and the Gimelut Chasadim corresponds to Avraham. The Avot HaKidoshim Himshich Uet HaMidot, and the Avot, through their behavior, were able to draw from this Midot to the world, HaElyonot Chesed Din V'Rachamim. 
each one was able to draw a chesed, din and rachamim, based on their own individuality. Avraham isha chesed, Avraham the man of chesed, Yitzchak keneged avodat hakorbanot, Yitzchak is like the avodah, the ability, the willingness to sacrifice, that's the whole concept of avodah, self-sacrifice, like we discussed in our class this morning, that tefillah, and also prayer, avodah is also prayer, obviously, korbanot and tefillah are very similar, both get close to Hashem. Efrot sabur al gava mizbeach, that the dust or the, the ash of Yitzchak is on the mizbeach because he was willing to be a sacrifice. And that's what we discussed this morning about a willingness to sacrifice ourselves for Hashem. This is how we get closer. The Yaakov Ishtam Yoshev Alim, and Yaakov is called Ishtam, a, 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 a shalem, complete. Yoshev Alim, sitting in tents, meaning what? Ohale Torah shel Shem ve'ever. That's what Rashi said. Ohale of Shem, of Shem ve'ever. This is what uh, the Ramban says. But the Ola of Torah, which means that's talking about the Ohalim of Torah. Okay. Uh, Lamed Hay on the bottom. Is that on the next page? Okay, let's do Lamed Hay on the bottom. Hishamer lecha ushmor nafshecha me'od pentikashel. This is very important. He gives lots of warnings in the introduction. We have to recognize that the, the, the neshamayim, there's no physical, there's no body. And there's no real dmut, there's no, it's not even a semblance of physicality. And all of the partsufim, the faces, and the tzurot, and the imagery, that Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai, that Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai wrote in the Zohar HaKadosh, and the Ari explained it in his books. Hem meshalim. These are parables. Lehodia seder hanagat orot el yonim. So that we can understand how these things work in the shamayim. But we shouldn't make the mistake in thinking that there's any physicality or any type of things like this in the shamayim. That is dangerous. And we can't go after the simple meaning. This is not pshat. This is sod. Sod is nothing. Face value is not. You have to look deeper to understand the underlying meaning. And God forbid a person should think for one minute in the upper worlds, that then is type of imagery whatsoever or, or, or any type of uh, physicality there. Ein, an eye, ozen, an ear, pe, a mouth, chotem, a nose, yad, a hand, yamin, or yad, small. None of this exists in the Shamaim. This is all parables to understand the deeper concepts. Kilo reitem kol temuna, because the Torah says specifically, you did not see any imagery. Ketiv, ve'en lemala ela gilui kochot hanhagato yitbarach. And the only thing in the Shamaim is the revelation of of the powers or the strength of how God interacts with the world. We said that from the beginning. That's the only thing the Kabbalah talks about. How does God interact with the world? The actions that we see Hashem doing in the world, and that's how He interacts with the world. About Him Himself, we don't know anything about that. Orot Ruchaniim, these are spiritual type of lights. Mufshatim legamre mikol siur v'gul gashmi. And they have no borders and they have no limitations. These are spiritual, these are not physical. The Cholatsurim hemrak mashal. And all of the things that are discussed throughout the entire book here and all the books of the Kabbalah that have to do with imagery, this is only a parable. This is the mashal. Lavina ta'inyana penimi shebo. To understand the deeper history hidden meaning that's there. So it's an imagery so you can understand what's deeper, but not to think for one minute that those images truly exist in the Shamaim. We know that the word Ayin, when you add up the letters of the word uh, gemat, uh, the gematria of Ayin, it comes out to 70, Shiv'im. Remez le shivim kochot yesh ba'ayin. It's a remez to the seven different powers, the seven different forces that exist in the eye. V'chen ozim ilshon izun. And ozen is from the language of izun, hearing. 
שבאוזן יש כוח להבדיל בין קולות, because a person whose ear is properly, uh, properly situated can recognize the difference between two voices or two different frequencies. Obviously, people, some people are better at that than others depending on their ability to understand different tone. But the ability to hear different tones, this is what the ozen. But we know you can't hear everything. There are things that are beyond. There are things that a dog can hear that a human being can't hear. But the ozen has a limitation because there's things you can. But the ayin sees everything. Of course, nowadays we understand that the ayin also has things it can't see, like microwaves and things like that. So that's also true. Even our eyes have the ability to see the spectrum of light, but it's a very narrow spectrum in the electromagnetic spectrum. And all the strength of hearing of a person which means there's a limit. All of our abilities are limited. Like it's explained in Nefesh HaChaim, and this is language. This is what all of the Torim, the, uh, the, uh, the adjectives, the descriptors. Because the Torah is full of things. Yad Hashem, Regel Hashem, Ene Hashem. This is all in the Torah, which means these descriptors are there, and this is what gives permission for us to speak in that, because the Torah was given through those, it, with those terms. But chas shalom, we shouldn't think to one minute, there's a yad, the Rambam talks about that from a pshat point of view, or from a nigle point of view. But from a so point of view, certainly not. There's no imagery in the Shemaim. Behem shemot atzmiim lehakochot olamot, And these are basically names of the forces in the, or the upper worlds. The law mush alim, and not that there that there's a real that these things are existing in that way in the shamayim. The chen gam badam enam shemot mush alim, and it's the same thing for man. The gam lo shehem be adam rak le siman. This is only a siman, a sign. The remez le anyanim aelyonim ane elamim that are for the sublime things. Kinyan Hashem shel adam, like he described before about the name of a person. The name of a person, Shem Shaloni Tam Beruach HaKodesh, which means a name that's given and not Ruach HaKodesh. Shehu Siman Lo Ota Atzura, that Tavnit Shehuskam Likrotav Shebzei Hashem. That the name that's given to a person through the Ruach HaKodesh, this name basically is talking about something that is a deeper concept, but the name itself, it doesn't have, it's just a bunch of letters together. Ela Shegam Be'adam Hem Atzmiim. But in the person, they are more, uh, more the essence of a person. Because the person is in the tzelem, has that imagery inside them. To think that anything exists in the world like that, in the Shamaim. And also in this fifth parak, where the rabbi is going to talk about the Midah, the Tiferet, or the Yud Kevavke, that he spends a lot of time in that parak, uh, giving a lot of warnings regarding how to be very, very cautious about uh, this type of thing. This is what gets people into trouble. This is why for many, many years, centuries, that this limud was not publicly uh, was not publicly taught or was not given over to people because the danger of misunderstanding these things is very, very severe. So that's why he's very, very careful to repeat over and over again that a person shouldn't have made a mistake in thinking that there's any imagery, God forbid, in the Shamayim. Lamed Vav on the bottom. Shmotav HaKidoshim Midot. Begemara Bibrachot. In Masechet Brachot in the Gemara. Melamed Shetafsu Moshe LaKadosh Baruch Bivigdo. The Gemara over there says that Moshe Kavyachol grabbed God by his, God grabbed God by the, by the clothing, by his clothing. The Katav HaMaharsha, one of the Mepharshim of the, uh, of the, of the Agada, of the stories of the Gemara. Sham, Shehem Yud Gimel Midot Rachamim. What is this, clo- what are the, what's the clothing of Hashem that's talking about? These are the Yud Gimel Midot. Amonai, Amonai, Kel Rachum Vechanun, Erech Apayim, Rav Chesed Demet. Those, that's the clothing of Hashem. That's the Yud Gimel Midot. They are Biur in the explanation. Sha Begadim Nikraim Midot. The Begadim, the clothing are called Midot. Velavash HaKohen Mido Bad. We see the word Mido, Mida, which means the Kohen wears something and that is Mida. So we see he's making a showing from this Pasuk that Levush, clothing, is Mida. Lefisha Begadim Shadam Lovesh, because the clothing that a person wears, Megalim Al Hanhagat Lovesh Otam. 
talks about the person. Depending on what the person is wearing, that's describing what the person on the inside is. Not completely. It's only uh, it's only an external factor. Obviously, it's not 100%. But a person will wear a certain color or wear a certain thing depending on what's going on on the inside. So it's a little bit of a revealing of what's going on on the inside, but it's not complete. Im bishat chedva, if it's a time of happiness, lovesh bigde chedva, he wears clothing of happiness, like in a wedding. Im bishat sar, if it's a time of trouble, lovesh bigde evel, he wears clothing of mourning. The im bishat milchama, if it's a time of war, lovesh chere vechanit, he wears a sword and he wears a, sh- a sheath for the sword. Kach etzel kadosh baruch and this is similar, not not uh, from an imagery point of view similar, Hamidot hem halivushim, the midot, the midot that we talked about, El Rachum Echanun and Echamayim Chesed Emet, these are livushim, these are clothing, Kav Yachol, Ve'apeulot, and the actions, Shemegalim Keshiman Higet HaOlam, that reveal when he is acting in that particular way in the world. So right now, it appears that Hashem is acting in the world with Din. So the clothing he's wearing right now is given the coronavirus and all that kind of stuff. That doesn't mean that he can't, uh, that he can act in any way he wants to. He's choosing to act with Dean. So the way we would explain it is he's wearing the clothing of judgment. And our rabbi warned, You cannot make the mistake and give any limitation whatsoever to God. This is totally kfira. Rak shemidot nikru b'shemidot, but they're called midot. They're not limitations, but they're called midot. Milshon medida from the language of measurement, shel hashpa'a of influence, which means God is influencing the world in this particular way now. So therefore, it's a measured amount. And how it's measured? Is it gvura? Is it uh, judgment? Or is it chesed? Is it loving kindness? Or is it rachamim? Or is it mercy? Because we know God has no uh, limitation. Infinite. And he does not function in our world according to his full power. The way he functions in the world is in a limited fashion. But that's his choice. That's not that he can't do it any other way. He can do it any way he wants to. He chooses to function with the world in a limited fashion, so therefore he chooses that there should be a measurement of his abundance in the world. (coughs) And he gives the amount that is needed according to the merit or what the, the tachtonim, which means us, deserve. The kli, we are a utensil. How much can you hold? The more you can hold, the more you receive. The more you can't hold, because other things going on, the less you receive. But the, 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 there's a measured amount, but the measured amount is not because of him. The measured amount is because of us. The chola tikunim hem tzimtzum ha'or. And all of the tikunim, all of these things are a limitation of the or. Again, not really or, it's a parable once again. So that you, so that there can be something that Tachtonim appreciate, because God created the world, so man would be able to appreciate Him. Well, in order to do that, we could not appreciate infinity. There's just no way. We are limited. So God limited Himself so we can see Him or we can appreciate how He functions in the world. And every single uh, attribute of amongst His attributes, He's Barak. Yes, Shi'ur. There's a specific measurement. How much is going to be given in that particular time? Whether it's a little bit or whether it's a lot. And the Yud Gimel Midot of Rachamim that we discussed before. These are 13 different ways of God having influence on the world. Shonot, different. Shel Rachamim of mercy. Ha'el Yonim, higher mercy. Which come to our world from the Keter, which is the highest, of course, and that's Rachamim Gemurim. That's unlimited, uh, unlimited uh, um, mercy. Go back to the top. Um, 
And we know that our rabbis, they called the names of Hashem Midot, measurements or attributes. Like it's explained in the Gemara, in the first parak of Masechet Rosh Hashanah, Amar Rav Yudah, Rav Yudah said, Brit Kiruta, there is a covenant that has been sealed, Lishlosh Esre Midot, for these 13 attributes, She'enan Chozrot Rekam, that they do not come back empty-handed, She'ne'emar, as it says, the Pasuk says, I am, I am uh, declaring or I am uh, uh, establishing a covenant. What are the Shlosh Esremidot, the 13 attributes? Amunai, Amunai, Kel Rachum, Vechanun, Erech Arpaim, Vegomer. These are the 13 Midot, yes? The Aklal and the general principle, Shiesh Lecha Lehamin, that you have to understand, that you have to believe, Baze, She'en Dimyon Ben Midot Hashem Barachu Ben Midotenu. There is no comparison between our Midot and the Midot of Hashem. In Erech wise, ours are limited and his are unlimited. He chooses to limit how he interacts with the world. But his, uh, he has unlimited ways to, uh, in, in, his midot are unlimited. He chooses to limit it, but that's not like us. We have limitations. Zulati b'derech haskarat siman b'shem levad. And the name gives it a limitation, because when a name is given to something, it limits it. amru razal, and this is what the rabbi said. Uh, yeah. Bekama mekomot, in many, many places. The language the Talmud will use and say, come and see, come and look and see that the way, the midah, the measurement of Hashem or the midot, the attributes of God is not like the midot of Basar Adam. This is a very common language that brought throughout the entire Talmud to, rem- to say that even though uh, there are similarities between the midot of Hashem and the midot of man, in comparison, in value, in erech, one is unlimited, the other is limited. The unlimited God chooses to do it in a limited fashion, but it's unlimited if he wants it to be unlimited. Continuing on, After I have given you the keys for this introduction, Yesh lanali kanes bibiur kol shem v'shem. Now we're going to go into a details about each name of Hashem. Mishmot HaKodesh HaKetuvim BaTorah From the names, the holy names that are written in the Torah. Ular Ir Enecha And to enlighten you. Bechol Makom In every place Shetimtza Katuv Shem Ehad Mehem Whenever you see a name of Hashem written in a certain place in the Tanakh and so that you will understand and you will have knowledge about the wellspring of life waters that are that basically come forth from each one of his names and when you are able to appreciate that particular item then your path will be successful and then you will be wise. All right, everybody, have a wonderful, have a wonderful night. Baruch Adonai, Le'olam, Amen, Ve'amen.